Yo, what is up guys, Stellboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV, hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So, interesting story kind of circulating on social media uh, for the past 24 hours or so. There's been a bit of a, a bit of an uproar in regards to Nyala Inoue, PED accusations essentially. And it all stemmed from a journalist on Fight Hype. His name escapes me. Long-haired dude. Uh, the dork-looking guy. Um, but essentially, I think he was doing a live stream or something along those lines. And he was basically questioning whether Nyoa Inoue was a clean athlete. He was making those, um, you know, insinuations. Now, you guys know my thoughts on drugs in boxing. It's not really that that uh, I'm talking about here. I, I believe most of these guys, if not all, at the elite level are juicing. It's more so the motivation for such comments and also the double standards when it comes to drugs in boxing. And I feel like I've gone over this ad nauseum in the past, but the live stream uh, and the discussion surrounding Nioa Inoue sounded like sour grapes. Like maybe the guy's been turned down for an interview or something like that because it didn't end there. He basically accused Inoue of being arrogant, sheltered, etc. when he was fighting in America. I think this was on his American debut. It kind of, to me, to me it kind of seems like the guy was salty. He never really got like an in-depth interview with Inoue. Maybe I'm wrong. But again... Essentially, he's saying Inoue is a suspicious athlete because of a comment he made on Twitter. I'm not even sure when this tweet was made, but I've seen a few screenshots with the translation, and Google Translate isn't always accurate, of course, and I've, I've seen people explain what he meant um, in regards to his comment. And basically, Inoue said, I've been tested uh, two times uh, in one week leading up to this fight, that's a bit too much. Something along those lines. Pretty innocuous, in my opinion at least. Uh, reality is, Inoue is signed up for VADA testing for this fight with Stephen Fulton. And I believe he's been with VADA for, for numerous of his fights. So it's nothing new for him. He's, he's, um, he's gone under these tests many times in his career. He was just stating that particular week, two times in one week, was a little inconvenient. Because of course... When these guys come in, I'm sure it interrupts your flow of training. Uh, these guys can turn up at any time whatsoever, could interrupt sleep. We don't really know the context behind uh, that week and, and when these guys turned up. So to me, that sort of comment is what it is. It doesn't really insinuate anything suspicious in my opinion. But fight hype are insinuating that it is. Now we all know, let's be real, fight hype have a extreme bias towards American fighters, particularly PBC fighters. Fight Hype back in the day was known as the unofficial Floyd Mayweather channel. There would be no questioning of Mayweather, uh, which goes to show that these guys aren't really journos. Um, they are just mouthpieces of powerful people in boxing, and they've taken up that role with the PBC. And most of these big interview channels do the same. You know, IFL, for example, are matchrooms, mouthpiece, etc, etc. But yeah, I mean, it's the double standards for me. Uh, this story has kind of blown up Twitter for some reason, boxing Twitter. Where were the same people um, asking questions surrounding the Charlo brothers, both missing VADA tests at the same time? I believe these guys were even fined by the WBC. Yeah, this seems a much bigger story. Like, an innocuous comment from a new A has made much more headlines than the Charlo brothers missing drug tests. I find that funny, I find that strange. And listen, the Charlo brothers are bigger names than Inoue in America and in the West, so that should have been a bigger story, but doesn't seem to be the case, and I do wonder why. Um, and in the build-up to this fight with Stephen Fulton, I'm already seeing people insinuate that Inoue is dirty, Fulton is going to Japan where he's going to get railroaded, this, that and the third. You know, the narratives are in full force. It always seems to me that foreign fighters, and when I say foreign fighters, I mean fighters who are not Western, 
So, you know, guys from Asia, Eastern Europe, etc. These guys are held to a completely different standard when it comes to drugs in boxing. Um, these guys usually have more suspicion levied at them, despite never testing positive. Manny Pacquiao, for example. And when these guys are caught, um, like Luis Ortiz, like Povetkin, like, you know, these sort of guys, there's usually a much bigger punishment than if an A-side privileged fighter gets popped. And there's also a very different reaction from fight fans, you know, uh, Western fight fans, for people who say they care about drugs in boxing. It's a much different standard that gets applied, whether it's a US fighter or a foreign fighter. And to me, that's what this whole situation reeks of. Inoue is a very popular guy in his, in, in his um, own territory, does millions of views, multi-weight world champion, undisputed at bantamweight, He's a true pound-for-pound -pound level fighter, and he's on the verge of maybe becoming a four-weight world champion and becoming unified at super bantamweight. The guy's doing big things, and I just think a lot of this type of behavior stems from insecurity, from a certain portion, a small portion, but a loud portion of American boxing fans. Most American boxing fans love Inoue, but there's a small segment who for whatever reason, can't seem to stand for success of foreign fighters, fighters who aren't born in the West or represent the West. And I think the pattern is quite obvious at this point in time. And it, and it gets to the point where this bias, this, this negative energy towards these fighters clouds these, these certain fans' judgments of fights. You know, it's become a trend in boxing within, within the last 10 years that these... Um, these non-Western fighters continuously get robbed in America, but there's all kinds of mental gymnastics, um, this, that, and the third, to try and convince people that these fights weren't robberies, and they were on the up and up, like Andre Ward Kovalev 1, for example, and 2, for that matter, that fraudulent stoppage, uh, Golovkin Canelo 1, even Lomachenko Haney, um, you know, the vast majority of people felt these fights went a certain way, but there's a small minority who who scream and shout, trying to convince others as well as themselves that the, the results were justified when they know they weren't, you know. And one of the biggest telltale signs of a robbery is ignore the actual hardcore boxing fans. Ignore the hardcore boxing fans. Listen to the people who tune into the odd fights. They'll watch the big fights or the highly hyped fights. Usually these people don't really know much about either guy. Usually they're not coming into the fight with a clear favourite or a clear bias. Usually casuals have fights pretty nailed on when it comes to scoring. It's weird. It's extremely weird. I recall watching Joshua versus Usyk 2 with friends and they are, they are all casuals. Super casuals in fact. And I believe one of the judges had Joshua winning that fight. And when the scorecards were read out, one of my friends, or well, all of my friends were kind of shocked by that initial scorecard, giving it to Joshua. Um, and again, these guys are casuals. They don't really understand the style matchups or what either guy's done in his career, especially Usyk at that time. But, you know, watching the fight, they were surprised by the, the scorecard giving it to Joshua. And usually... A casual's read on these big fights is pretty accurate from what I can see and from what I've observed over the years because, again, these guys aren't really into the tribal stuff like many of, of us boxing fans are on socials or a certain, a, a certain segment of boxing fans are on socials. And you see that with, like, the fights I mentioned prior, you know, like Ward Kovalev, like Golovkin Canelo, uh, for example. And yeah, I, I, I believe a lot of the dishonesty surrounding these fights, surrounding, you know, the scoring of these fights, stems from a place of, I'd say a place of uh, potential, I'm not going to say hate, that's strong, but a little bit of insecurity, I would say. And that's what I believe this Inoue situation is all about, quite frankly. I just believe it stinks of insecurity. That's how I'm reading it, at least. That's what I see, and I've seen enough of it throughout the years engaging on 
on, uh, you know, YouTube boxing and things like that for YTBC. We all know it when we see it, right? Let's, let's just be honest. And again, I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with supporting a guy who comes from your neck of the woods or who looks like you. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think the issue is, is when that clouds your judgment over other fighters, when it, when it makes you uh, talk negatively about those fighters, but it's not based on anything tangible. It's based on feelings, emotions, and like I said, insecurity. And I feel, I feel that we're in that era right now where a lot of these uh, non-Western fighters are kind of going through that. Um, you know, boxing is a bipolar sport now. There's, there's more than one country involved. It's not just America and, uh, to a lesser extent, the UK. Uh, but for boxing is a global sport now, and to me that makes it better. But for some people, not so much. But it is what it is. Maybe I'm just putting on my pseudo-psychologist hat on trying to analyse the motives behind this, these kind of attacks on Inoue. But anyway, share your thoughts below. What do you make of this situation? Being your guide, Elboy. Peace.